Welcome to Build Your Best Business. I'm your host, Eric Holtzclaw. Build Your Best Business focuses on the entrepreneurial journey. What does it take to successfully start, manage, grow, and eventually exit a business? I'm talking today with Wendy Allen. She is a productivity strategist and author of the book, Enough is Enough, Get Control of Your Stuff. <laughs> and her company is called The 25th Hour. So we'll have to talk a little bit about how you came up with the company name and why it's called the 25th hour. So, so thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So the 25th hour. Okay. So here's the real deal. Okay. I bought an existing company <laughs> okay. 17 years ago <laughs> okay. called the 25th hour. Got it. It was a personal concierge service. So if you need an extra hour in your day, you hire me and I run your life. Got it. So that's what I did for five years. Okay. Well, mine is named Laddering Works because I wrote a book called Laddering. So that's how the company name yeah. came to be. And mm -hmm. it's like, it's nothing more interesting or exciting right. than that. So do you still do the concierge? I story? don't. What okay. happened was I realized I was just enabling crazy, busy people. I was about to say, that's what Ugh. I was thinking. Because almost every entrepreneur that I start with, I say, well, what do you need more of? And they're like, oh, I need more time. And I'm right. like, really? Do you need more time? Really? Yeah. So, so talk to me a little bit about your past. How did you get into? I was in advertising. And okay. then in radio right. sales. So I was, on, I was both on the advertising agency side, starting out at McCann Erickson back in the early 80s. Okay. And then I moved over to the selling side. I sold for a magazine, for a newspaper, for cable, TV, and then most recently uh, radio. I was a 99X sales manager for several years. How were you? And I was a salesperson for a account executive for the country stations, Kicks and Y106. Okay. All right. And then in 2000, I said, enough. Yeah. I'm out of here. Right. Um, and I really wasn't sure what I was going to do. And I, I literally a girlfriend came to me and said to me, there's a business for sale. Two women in Buckhead own a business. They're getting ready to let it go defunct because they're both pregnant with their first child. I think you should talk to them. And I literally said to her, I'm not interested in owning a business. Right. Never crossed my mind. Right. But I went to talk to them. And one thing led to another. And I realized that I had a gift mm -hmm. and it was getting things done. And that's what these people needed me to do, get things done for their clients. So I, I eventually, you know, one of the women d delivered their baby 10 days early. And the other <laughs> one was a little freaked out. So the price went, you know, went down to almost nothing. Nothing, right. And I bought the business. And I remember waking up the next morning and saying to my husband, I, what did I just do? And what do I do now? Right, right. So I did what they did, which was really just run crazy, crazy busy people's lives. And I got five years into it and realized, oh, my God, I don't have a life of my own because mm -hmm. my life is their life. Yeah. And I'm just enabling these people to live this way. Right. And that just destroyed me. So I kind of took a look at the way I operated. And I remember being in corporate America for many years, observing the way people worked. I was astounded at how... Successful they were, despite how disorganized they were. And we are amazed at that at all times. I have right? lots and lots of clients, and you're sort of like, "How did you get to where you are?" Really? Right. And yeah. can you imagine what your life would look like if you had systems? Right. Because exactly. that's really all it is. Mm -hmm. So I took a look at the, what I did and what made me successful. And it wasn't that I was any better at sales than anybody else, because I think sales is just relationships anyway, and that I was good at. But I was good at getting things done because I had systems. Right. Yep. And I followed them because they served me well. Mm -hmm. And so I literally just created a PowerPoint presentation based on what worked with, for me and went out and found out where the pain was in people and offered what I had. Very nice. Yeah, we do very similar work. So I go into companies that are, I say they're prospering, but not progressing. So they're, you know, they're, they're, they're still profitable, but not progressing. They're just mm -hmm. sort of moving along. And typically in the entrepreneurs, when I deal with them, their phones are ringing too much. They've got too much going on. They'll tell me they need more time. And I'm like, eh, we probably just need to do things a little more efficiently. Exactly. Yeah, right. and it, and or be honest about what you're really getting done and what exactly. you're really doing. Oh. And also I'm really, really uh -huh. tied into being realistic about all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like you can't tell me you don't have enough time. If I watch what you do all day, I can find it for you. Right. You're just not looking for it. Well, and, and you run into it. It's such an interesting study in psychology because you'll have an owner or an entrepreneur who won't give something up because once they do, well, then what do I do for the business? Because we're so measured in what we do. Mm -hmm. So if I'm the only one, and, and my sort of same or similar example, I guess, I was running a research company. We did about 200 to 250 projects a year. And I was the only person in the company who could resource the projects. So we would have a project show up from our sales team. And I was the guy who's like, I know who to put on the project. I know if we can take it or not, how long it will take us to do it, those kind of things. And But I was also like the bottleneck, right? And I went to spring break and read E-Myth. 
Uh-huh. And then I came back and said, we're changing everything. And of course, everybody in the company was like, oh, no, (laughs) the boss read a book. Uh And I I had to assign three people to do the job I was doing because there was they took so many different kind of pieces and but finally got that kind of offloaded. And it was crazy to watch them go through that, you know, but I I saw myself as sort of tied up in, well, they have to have me around, right? Like I'm the one who knows where everything is and what's working and you get a little bit of self-worth yeah. tied into that. Yeah, absolutely. So then talking about uh, writing a book. So there's a big difference between, you know, deciding you're going to put the systems in place. and Writing a book was a fluke. Was it? On it was a totally fluke, total fluke. So I fell in the shower six years ago. And I sliced my arm open. Wow. It was one of these accidents. I was in the house by myself. It was 8 p.m. on a Thursday night. I went to take a shower after working out. I accidentally slipped. The person who rebuilt my shower door never sealed the glass. Wow. And so to keep myself from not cracking my head open, I braced myself against the wall. And as I slid down, you got it. Yeah. Bad. 911, the whole nine yards. But they basically said, you can't travel, which I was doing a lot of. And so I said to my husband, you know what? I can't go anywhere. I got like eight weeks and I have a conference in October. I'm going to write this book and I'm going to make it October's my deadline so I can have live books at this conference to sell. Smart. I literally looked at, I have 10 modules in what I do. So each module is a chapter. Okay. And I, here's how much time I have before it has to be to the printer. Here's how much I have to write per week. Done. That's how, my brain that's how people it, like us work. Right? It's how I, I, I'm wired that <laughs> Right, right, right. So I wrote a book. And, you know, everybody kept saying all the, over the years, oh, my God, I love her. I wish I could take her home with me. I wish I could take her home with me. I thought, okay, now you can take me home with you. That's this right. is the way to do it. Because <laughs> well, I'm not going home and living in your, in your stuff. <laughs> but take the book. Well, I, I want to understand mm-hmm. a little bit of the, because we do similar work. But you said that, you know, you bought this, this company and that you realized that you were enabling these other people. And then you woke up one day and it was like, you know, I'm just allowing them to continue to live the way that they were and I'm getting all tied up into their stuff. Like, what was that transfer like for you? And and how did you let them drag you along? If you were used to doing operational kind of stuff. I I, didn't let them drag me along. I'm not that type of person. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay. I basically said, I know there's a better way to do this where I can really help people live differently in the way they operate, but they got to want it bad enough. And the reality of it is none of those clients stayed, I stayed with those people. Those people wanted to live that way. Exactly. They wanted to pay mm-hmm. somebody to have a personal assistant. They loved telling people in their life they had a personal assistant. That wasn't going to be me. Yeah. I gave all the keys back that I had on my keychain, and I went out and I started talking to people who were in pain. These people weren't in pain around this, right. not enough to do anything about it. Compelling events. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I found people and organizations and entrepreneurs mainly because they're starting businesses and have no systems, and how do they get things done in a way that serves them well. We all get things done. But does it serve you well, or are, or are you totally stressed out at the end of the day from the way your day operated? I'm like, as crazy busy as I've been, and my business is it's like sort of on the verge right now of exploding. Um, <clears throat> I don't have any stress around the way it operates. Right. And that's the best I can do. I have no control over what's coming into me all day long, as neither do you, or neither does anybody, right? Right now, right. the emails are popping into my inbox, as your, they are of yours. I only have control over it once it gets there. Mm-hmm. So I have a system for what I do so that I'm not living out of the black hole of an email inbox. Most people have 10,000 emails in their inbox. They don't know, they don't know, any, they don't know any other way to live. Right. I do. Right. And the only reason why I do it is because it works for me. Yeah. And I'm all about if it works for you, whatever you do, and keep doing it. Yeah. But if you're in pain around the clutter and the chaos and the piles in your office... I have a great system. So I guess it's good to own it. So you make, because some people will say, oh, you know, I'm so overwhelmed and whatever, but they really, they really enjoy it. When they say they're overwhelmed with a laugh at the end of that sentence, right there I know they're not serious about this. They're not serious. At yeah. all. Yeah. Or they're really nervous about it. Or they're, they kind of want to change, but they're not in it yet. You know, I always say to my clients, as I'm sure you do too, I am not willing to work harder for you than you are willing to work for yourself. Oh, absolutely. I patient can't. has to be ready. I tell I'm them the patient really, has yeah. to be ready. And I say to them all the time, how much longer do you want to swim upstream? Like, are your arms not getting tired at this point in your yeah, life? Yeah, yeah. That's why my best, my, my best clients are always, and this is not, a, not an affront to <clears throat> millennials, it's Generation X and above. So... <laughs> Isaac. So it's somebody who sort of is 
they've been doing it for a while and they've realized it's sort of the Dr. Phil, like, how's that working for you? Yep. Right. Exactly. Like, how's that working yeah. for you? And I also, I also talk a lot about, I'm somebody that straddles the paper slash technology world. Yeah. Are you? I'm very much a technologist. If I can apply technology to something, I'm going to do it okay. immediately. Most of the world doesn't do that. Yeah. They are, they straddle both worlds. And yeah. so I have systems for both worlds and that's what I teach. Yeah. No, I'm, and I probably <clears throat> too much. So, cause I, that, company that I told you about where I uh, went and read Emeth, I was also in the process of building a brand new office at the same time. And I built myself an office with tons of file cabinets and things because I always had paper. Right. I never had any paper. That's I moved awesome. In, I moved into that office and we were like, we had food stored in the drawers. I'm right. Like, this is ridiculous. I know. I, I opened drawers I and I'm like, what's with cabinets? the sneakers and the tampons and the gym bags? <laughs> <laughs> They're file drawers. <laughs> right. It's no paper. And they kind of look at me funny. Like, what do you mean file drawers? Yeah. But again, I always go back to, if it works for you, it works for me. If yeah. you're happy, I'm happy. But if so, you, so first thing, so you talked about email and I've heard people like, you know, filing email bankruptcy and, you know, just saying, I just give up and I'm going to start over. So what's, what are some of your, idea. so you got the 10 modules, right? So taking you home, what's one of the modules? What's one of the things you... Declutter your e-clutter is one of the modules. Okay. And what I talk about is when you think about it, Eric, what's another word? I'm going to challenge you. What's another term for what the mailbox in front of your house actually is? When you think about that, what is that? It's, it's a receptacle. Yeah. It's a bin. It's a, you know, my, my, I, when I say this in a workshop, I get trash collector, all right. that stuff. Well, what it really is, is it's a loading dock. Ah. It's a little mini loading dock, right? right? You don't just go in your mailbox and pull out what you want and leave the crap for your mailman. <laughs> right. You take everything out <laughs> and you process right. it. Right. Well, that's what an email inbox uh. is. We're not treating it like a loading dock. Yeah. So if we treat it like a loading dock, it comes in and we move it somewhere. Interesting. Yeah, and that's how and I tell people that if I haven't responded to your email in 24 hours, mm -hmm. you didn't get it. I didn't I didn't get it. It didn't exist because I do not allow them to sit. Right. Like I go through them and there I have a lot of emails in my inbox, mm -hmm. but none of them are they've all been processed. But here's the thing, and I want also I want everyone to understand this. There's a difference between processing and doing. Mm -hmm. So I always tell my clients, if you spend the entire day answering every email that comes into you as it comes into you, then you've essentially checked off everybody else's to-do list. True. Congratulations. Yeah. Had that work for you. <laughs> right? So you're, you're big into the so delegation. So I'm yeah. into, as it comes in, putting it where I need it next. Right. It doesn't mean I stop what I'm doing to answer your email. It means I'm going to put it where I need it next. So I have a system set up in, in my folder system that allows me to grab it. And what the folder says, the, fir the very first folder at the very top under the word inbox says, yeah. action this week. Got and it. underneath that one, there's a folder that says no deadline. So when stuff comes into me, if, you, if I gotta do something for you and I notice that's a to-do, I'm dragging it into action this week. I don't live out of my email inbox. Yeah. I live out of my action this week. Well, and I've moved everybody to Slack. So I'm completely against email okay. now. So anyway, yep. so we're and I, you know, yeah, and, and you can use that if you, I have, I've used Slack before and I have lots of different apps that I use for different things. There's yeah. one called productive. It doesn't, does whatever works for you. Yeah. So when we get back, I want to hear a couple more of things. So we're going to go to our commercial break. So yeah. So we'll be back in just a second. We're talking to Wendy Ellen, Ellen, Wendy Ellen. She is a productivity strategist and author of the book, Enough is Enough, Control Your Stuff, which is a great name for a book. Uh, she's also the owner of The 25th Hour. So you're listening to Build Your Best Business. I'm your host, Eric Holtzclaw. We'll be back in just a minute. So tell me how you came up with the name Laddering Works. So it's tied into several things. It has several meanings. So laddering is the name of the book that I had that came out in 2013. And I'm working on two more books in that series. So the first book was about how to find customers and how to create marketing messages. I'm working on one around building teams and then also being a good leader. So how do you run your business effectively? Those kind of things. Nice. In that book, I teach you that you need to understand why. And we need to understand why very deeply. So you're asking that question multiple times to understand what your customer wants and how they're buying from you. So with laddering, we're helping you scale up. So we're laddering your company up to the next level by deeply understanding what's not working in the company. 
So what operational structures are missing? What are you not doing on the marketing side? And so we apply the techniques that I talk about in that book and we ladder your company up. And the interesting thing about laddering is you think about moving up. Well, we actually have to go deep. We have to look up underneath the covers. We have to understand why the structure is not there before we can take you up to that next level. So it, it plays off a, a couple of ways, but it's based on, um, based on that technique. And we're back. You're listening to Build Your Best Business. I'm your host, Eric Holtzko. I'm talking today with Wendy Edlin. She is a productivity strategist and author of the book, Enough is Enough, Get Control of Your Stuff. She's also the owner of The 25th Hour. And she and I may or may not have been separated at birth because we're all about... <laughs> <laughs> Really, you got to like take care of all that stuff, right? <laughs> so, I mean, I, I do marketing. So I'm known for marketing. I also do operational work. Um, but really, marketing is operations now. And because I have a technology background, like the two of them together, like people talk about marketing and I'm like, it's not Don Draper. It's, it's actually Breaking Bad, right? It's like building the best meth and you got to build it consistently over and over and over again, yep. right? Yep. And so many people think that it's such a mystery and business is hard and it's really just about building systems and understanding processes and things like that. So we talked a little bit about email, which a lot of people get kind of stuck in that. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other areas that you work with with, with people? I talk a lot about calendaring. I talk a lot about being realistic about how much you can get done. Yeah. And that's huge. Yeah, you probably could coach me on that. I have people <laughs> that will come, that you know, that will say to me, I, you know, I'm just, why am I so defeated at the end of the day? Why? Yeah. Because you think you have 36 hours in a day and you schedule yourself as if you do. So of course right. you're not going to get all done. Right. right. Right? Right. You know, it's like today's a perfect example. I knew I had to be here by 2.45. I live in Virginia Highlands. Oh, wow. What part of Virginia Highlands? Um, right around the corner from Alans. Okay, yeah. And I've been there for 40 years. All right. So that's my, my hood. I lived off Pasadena. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Real close. Mm. Real close. Yeah. So, but I had no idea what the traffic is going to be like because right away I'm thinking tomorrow's a holiday. Maybe people are leaving early today. And right. Like, I really get into that process of what are the possibilities? Lay them all out there. I left at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I didn't have to be here until 2.45, but I thought, if nothing else, let me get up here. There are plenty of places I could kill time where I'm only 10 minutes away. Right. Right? So I had 15 minutes to get here, to be here 15 minutes early because you asked me to be. And I am... I am the student that does whatever she is told to do. It's the way I'm wired. And I it, may, it may go into your childhood a little bit. But and if I don't, and later. if I'm, and if I know I'm not going to honor my word, I'm yeah. a mess about it. Right, I mean, right. you got the brunt of my mess, right, honestly. Right. So I, um, uh, that's the way I'm wired. Now, I also know that I have an appointment on the phone at 5 o'clock. It didn't matter where I was going to be. I can make a phone call while I'm in the car, and I have no idea how long it's going to take me to get home. And the dog needs to be picked up at the groomer. And I said to Marty, I'm only sending Ruby to the groomer today if you can pick her up because I am not going to even be anywhere near the neighborhood at 4 o'clock. It's the way I'm wired. Yeah. You yeah, know? and it's called – there's a thinking style thing I do, and you're, you and I are very similar. It's called present future. So we worry about what I need to do now to be successful with a future event. And there's some people who just think about the future. And most entrepreneurs are just always living in the future. And then you have some people who are kind of engineering because mm -hmm. I'm very similar, right? And right. Atlanta is not about how many miles it is. It's about how long it's going to take. There's nowhere right. you can get in the city for under 20 minutes. Right. And I'm being generous. Right. Really? And so f from a calendaring, are you a believer in like blocking time, like so whole days to do things? Well, and two things. Number one. I like to look at my calendar on Monday morning and I like to see what I got going on all those five days. Right. I'm very clear about the fact that God gave us a five-day window for a reason. Right. Like, it's five days. Right. And I don't care about getting work done by the end of today. I care about getting this week's work done by the end of Friday. Okay. There's something for me about feeling like I earned my weekend. Yeah. So I'm really very clear on that. I call Friday afternoon crap day. I mean, I have clients who call who know crap day. I have a client who coined the term crappy hour, where on Friday afternoon at 4 o'clock, he cranks out the beer or the wine, but he's doing all the little crap in his life that yeah. he didn't get done during the week. Got and it. why Friday afternoon? Because I never want to be in traffic on a Friday no. afternoon, right? No. But so the two things that are important is I like to look at my calendar because I, if, I booked an, if I booked a lunch with Isaac four weeks ago for this coming Thursday... Is that still going to happen? A lot happened in the last four right, weeks. Right, right. So I want to get really clear on, is that going to happen? If it's not, I want to let Isaac know now so he can make other plans. Yes. That's number one. The other thing I do with my calendar is, you know, I'm, I have this thing about meetings. I cannot stand them. 
You don't like meetings. I hate meetings. I think they're a total waste of time. Mm. And I've gotten a lot of my clients to turn meetings into conversations. Just thinking in that alo- in that term alone. So, so unpacking that a little bit, do you hate meetings because, okay, I both love and hate meetings. Okay. So I, I do too. If the meeting is productive, right, right, I love it. But right. I mean, I what I hate is say, an hour meeting that goes an hour. Oh, when you hear about everybody's weekend, well, how is their weekend? Because you have a sales meeting in the radio station on a Monday morning, and I sit for thirty-five minutes and talk about what you do on the weekend. I don't care. Right. I I will we schedule because we do accountability. It's a way to keep our customers like on. And they're scheduled for 30 minutes, but my goal is to get them done to 15. I'm the same way. I I'm have like Zoom calls on, with all my clients, I'm and I always like, schedule 30, 15 minutes, and math that call. Yeah, I'm trying to get off at 15. Because it's 15 minutes more they could use to get their stuff done. Yeah, when right? it means we're being efficient. Exactly. Yeah. So, But I say to my clients, everybody is so quick to block a meeting with somebody else. Why aren't you willing to block a meeting for yourself yeah. to get your work done? Because right. all meetings do is produce more work. Absolutely. So that is I, so funny because I'm like I, I try to keep my Friday schedule because I'm like by the end of the week I actually have to do the things that, that I talked about all week <laughs> the, exactly the rest of the week exactly right, 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 right. so I'm clear on three block times a week and here's the rule with block times this is my rule okay. to myself yeah I'm allowed to move them but I'm not allowed to cancel them got it I gotta have three block times a week for Mine my work just get canceled. <laughs> You just get canceled. <laughs> there's those crap times that you talk about the crap hours. Crap day, yeah. There's the ones that somebody calls me and you're like, because I, you and I said we're basically just therapists, right? And it's like somebody will call and be like, can I come? I'm like, yes, I'll give you part of my Friday. And I just shouldn't, right? Yeah. I should just get up and I should just do what I need to do. Because if I just had the one day, I could do absolutely everything I need to catch up on. Right. There's no excuse. And what happens is I'll let a little slice go away, right? A little slice. Before you know yeah. it. And then I'm yeah. working on a Saturday or Sunday. And I hate to work on I the won't work on the weekend. I hate to work on the weekend. And where it happens sometimes. I, I hate it. I mean, if I do, if I have to, I have to. Yeah. Um, and if I'm going away next week, then I prepare on Sunday usually. But other than that. but So it's things like multitasking versus unitasking procrastination, perfectionism, um, how do you get control of your daily workload, things that come in paper form versus email form, how do you, you know, people say to me, how do I deal with interruptions, and I say, you know, how do I deal with, how do I deal with unexpected interruptions, and I say, expect them, Yeah. build time in for them, they're right. going to happen, Right. Right. but what if everybody were willing to have a certain amount of time every day where they didn't answer their phone and they didn't check their email for 90 minutes, because they had something they had to get done. How cool would that be? Is that oh, when yeah. this, once they were done, that was the time when they would take interruptions? Absolutely. And I love, like, we've got a week coming up where there's a holiday. Best weeks ever. Totally. People go away. <laughs> It's oh, yeah. done. Oh, yeah, yeah. Get way ahead of everybody. Holiday starts tomorrow at noon. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Work doesn't start back till Tuesday. Yeah, right. And then we have a short week next week. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, and it's, it's great. So yeah. as you think about um, your clients then, so talk to me about, because I'm getting pretty dirty with mine. So I get into the business and I become a part of it. And I'm like, you know, and I, it, I do it intentionally. I, I, when I sold my business, I tried the coaching route and I'm just not a good coach. Like I'm better at like, let me get in, like clean up, right. And help you clean up. Um, but some people do the like, Hey, we're going to meet. I'm going to help you look at this. And then we're going to come back and do accountability. Wh- where do you Oh, fall? I'm in the weeds. You're in the weeds. Okay. Oof. You're like me. Yeah. I like being in the weeds. Cause here's why I really get to know somebody when I'm in their stuff. And you get to know where they lie to you. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I get to, when I, if I know them better, then I feel great about the accountability that's coming, that's following this. Because yeah. I'm sort of like tough love, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm kind of a little in your face about this. And the only reason why is because I am trying to get you to live differently after 30 years, 30 right. years, 40 right. years, 50 years. And that's not an easy thing to do. Yeah. So uh, I'm in there. I'm, I'm making them get very clear on what the outcome is. What's the reward? Why are we doing this? Yeah. And it's almost like, you know, keeping your eye on the prize. Well, and it's an interesting thing. So I do the same thing. And I'm also trying to learn what they will and won't do. Because there's going to be things that they just never will do. And I'm like, okay, if you're never going to do this, is there something else? And mm-hmm. specifically on the marketing side, we'll give them assignments like, hey, write a blog post, go answer a core question, do certain things. And they'll naturally gravitate towards what they enjoy. And right. so then we're like, okay, we're not going to make you, it's not supposed to be terrible and painful. Mm-hmm. So if you don't like to write blog posts, just answer core questions for us and life will be good. Right. right? So, you know, not trying to change them because I don't actually believe people change. They can make their lives different. They can become aware, but they don't really change, right? Right. Um, And then the other thing is that, you know, in some ways in coaching and nothing against it, you're asking somebody to do something they don't know how to do. Right. 
like you're telling me to do this. I don't even know how to do it. So Mm -hmm. when you get into the weeds with them, you're like, I'm going to show you how you do it. Right. I'm going to set it up and all you have to do is follow suit. Yes. Right. I'm the type of person that when my computer goes down and I call Stan, my dude, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> who he calls himself the dude, okay, so I don't I feel like bad it. calling okay, him the dude. Yeah. And he said, I don't even tell you the Everybody full name off air right. what he calls himself. <laughs> I go, Stan, I need you to come over and help me, please. Show me how to do X, Y, Z. He goes, let's do it remotely. I'm like, no, we do this. We go through this every time. If I see it, I will learn how to do it myself. Right. I know that if I'm that way, there are people in the world that are that way. Yeah. So I can stand up there and I can tell you what the system's supposed to look like. If I set it up for you, I've got a much better shot at you following it. Absolutely. So I want to do the one-on-one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love and doing the one-on-one. Get them, get them in there and explain the why. And it's if they know the why, there's more of an opportunity for them to follow it too. I mean, that's the right. big. That's the thing that I think happens or don't think no in the you know millennial workforce and things like that. They want to know why. And exactly. so used to Amen. having people. Well, we're a lot of a lot of workforce. We, we told them why. Because your mother said so. <laughs> and that's <laughs> not enough. I know. Just not enough. Dang, they it won't, for my mother. They won't do the because I'm paying you thing, right? right? Like they want to actually have some right. understanding of that. So um, okay. So tell me then, like, how do I know that I need to reach out to somebody like you? Are you in pain about the way you operate? Literally, from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to bed, we all have the same challenge, and that's to get things done. Are you in pain around your email inbox? Is it stressing you out? Are you losing money? Well, in pain, unpack that for me, meaning I avoid um, it. I... Are, are you, is there stress around the way you operate? Okay. Are you losing sleep? Yeah. Are you, you know, I always say the best thing about the way I live, the number one reason why I do what I do is because when I turn the light out at night, my head turns off. Mm. It doesn't turn on and I'm laying in bed for the, la- the next 30 minutes thinking of, oh, my God, I forgot to do that. Oh, my God, I wonder if this fell through the crocs. Oh, my God, I didn't call that person back that I was supposed to call back. There's no, oh, my God. Yeah. I, it's, I got it all under control. Doesn't mean I got it all done because right. we never get no. it all done. No, I got it under control. And that's a great feeling. Yeah. So, you know, I always say that everything that we do and all the decisions that we make in our life boil down to one thing and one thing only. How does it make us feel? Right. Absolutely. So how does it make you feel the way you're, like you, you run your, your business? If you feel good about it, if you feel good about the way your office environment functions, and I never care about what it looks like. I only care about how it functions. If you feel good about it, then don't do anything. Yeah. You know, it's like Weight Watchers. You yeah. know, if you, if, you, if you don't feel good about your body or your doctor tells you you're going to have a heart attack or you can't fit in your clothes, those are reasons to start thinking about doing something different. Right. So, yeah, so something like that. And not just that it's like, the end thing to say. I've had clients call me who say, I need you to work with this person because she's about to lose her job. Mm. Like, this is the last straw. If we can't get her organized and she can't make it happen, yeah. we have clients calling. She's not responding to them on time. She's not delivering what she says she's going to. You know, there's some serious reasons for why people need this or want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, and I wrote an article about this not that long ago about wanting it and needing it because, you know, that work life balance concept. I like to work. I really do. I enjoy Me it. Me too. I'm good at well, it. Well, I don't, I don't feel like it's work. Yeah. That's what I, yeah. I Yeah. I enjoy it. Yeah. I enjoy it. So so I choose to do the things I do, and I feel like it's my work-life balance, and I know where my boundaries are, right? So Big word. <laughs> Big, huge word in, my, in what I do is boundaries. Yeah. Big word. Yeah. So anyway, well, good. So to get the book, where can we find it? Amazon. Amazon. That's it. Easy. And if you go to my website link, it sends you to Amazon. And so then the 25th hour. So you're going to stay with that? Because it's kind of, I mean, it's a kind of conversational piece to say the 25th hour, but you're really helping people more like the four hour work week or something. Right? Kind of, sort of. But you know what? People never remembered my company. They just remembered Wendy Ellen. Oh, did you? So okay. I basically don't even have the 25th hour of my business card. It's just my name. Got it. Okay. Because everybody remembered me because my business really is me yeah so much of me and how i deliver what i deliver and and my personality around it i'm so committed to helping people live differently eric yeah it really is my life's work yeah yeah and people it, will typically remember eric but holtzclaw sometimes i tell people <laughs> that my relatives couldn't afford any vowels so <laughs> That's it's great. all a bunch of concepts awesome. well you've been listening to build your best business we've been talking with wendy ellen she's a productivity strategist and author of the book enough is enough get control of your stuff If you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to build your business, this is one of the key things. It's one of the reasons that companies do not succeed. They don't ever move from entrepreneurial run to professionally managed. It's the person who thinks they gotta be there every day. It's all up to them. They can't put things in place. You know, excuse, excuse, excuse. There you go. Yeah, so you gotta have an operational structure. Uh, Until next time, what are you gonna do to build your best business?